Hi, it's Grace here on Books and Cooks, and I am here today to film a reading tag video. Um, and this is just a really fun tag that I saw the other night that is an original tag by um, Ms. Richards Reads. So I will link their channel down below in the description box. And they did it as like a four person tag um, video, which was very fun to watch. So I got to hear the answers from four different people. But this tag is called the Murder She Wrote tag. Um, and it was inspired by Angela Lansbury, who um, played Jessica Fletcher on Murder She Wrote for many years. I think it was 12 seasons that that show was on and who recently passed away, um, which is very sad. I am a huge Angela Lansbury fan. I've been a really big fan since I was a little kid. I used to watch that show uh, very frequently with my grandmother, and I also loved Angela Lansbury in um, lots of different movies, but definitely Beauty and the Beast as Mrs. Potts. Um, yeah, so so a classic, and I wanted to do this tag to remember her as well. So let's dive in. I will try to include the prompts down below. All of them are inspired by Murder, She Wrote and different characters that are on the show. And so um, as we go through them, I will try to explain a little bit about, you know, why they were inspired by the show, but it should be fun. So the first question is Fletcher question. So it was inspired by Jessica Fletcher, who is the main character on Murder, She Wrote. And the the question is, who is your favorite female author? And this one was actually hard for me in the sense that I actually don't read a ton of books by the same authors frequently. Um, and especially as an adult, that's true. Like I am not huge on series in general. Um, and I will pick up books by the same author, obviously, but a lot of, a lot of things I have like favorite books, but I don't necessarily have favorite authors. But when I looked through my shelves and I was thinking about like, who are some female authors who, whose writing has really, really stuck with me this year and who I have read multiple books from, um, I thought of two. So the first one is Jasmine Ward, who um, I think I talked about earlier this year reading Salvage the Bones. And this is the second full length book that I've read from her. I also read Men We Reap, um, which is excellent. Her writing is just very, very strong. And I really like her style, um, especially I'm not the the biggest fan of lit literary fiction in general. I kind of am more into genre fiction and uh, will pick up literary fiction here and there. But I think Jasmine Ward has just this excellent approachable style and she writes about topics that are really relevant to the present moment. Um, and I really appreciate that. So I would say she's one of my top female authors. And then the other author I thought of is Catherine Arden who I read the Winter Night uh, trilogy from her last year and this year, and I absolutely love it, um, all three books in that series. And then this fall, I read Small Spaces, which is one of her middle grade books as well. And again, I think that she's just an excellent author. I think that I haven't read something by her that wasn't well-crafted at this point, and so I would really like trust pretty much anything in her hands. And so I felt like these two ladies really um, made sense with the Fletcher question, the Jessica Fletcher question. So the second prompt is relatives. Um, and this is, you know, talking about different relatives within the series Murder, She Wrote. Um, so that the question is a book that is family focused or has a found family aspect to it. And for this, I picked, I could pick many things because I actually love found family, but specifically I thought of A Lats Away by Darcy Little Badger because I think this book is really family focused in a really interesting way. So not only is the main character A Lats Away um, kind of going on an investigation to find out something that happened to one of her family members and sort of... Um, 
sort of, you know, find peace for his spirit because she does talk to ghosts in this story. Um, and he has come to her after dying and sort of like given her this mission to kind of figure out what's going on and investigate. So she's doing that and that's related to family. But um, also I just love the way that her parents are written in this story. I feel like in both Darcy Little Badger books that I've read so far, um, I think that the parent-child relationship is just really nicely done. And I love that Alatsue's parents like very much trust her and respect her as a thoughtful young person and support her in um, this investigation and in sort of doing what she believes is right even when it can be dangerous and they're there for her while she's doing that so i i thought of this book because i absolutely loved that aspect and this book in general is just a beautiful beautiful story so i would highly recommend it and then the third prompt is 12 seasons so that refers to the fact that murder she wrote had 12 seasons and this is a favorite longer series that you've read so I know I just said I don't read a ton of longer series anymore but one that I did finish up finally um, last year is the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants series by Anne Brashares and this was a, a truly favorite series for me when I was um, a young adult and I read I think I had read three or four of the books when I was a young adult and then um, last year and the year before I went back and I picked up all of the published books so I believe that there are four or five um, published books in this series and I know that the ending of the series is quite controversial for those who have read it, um, but I thought that it was actually really well done and I liked the way that Amber Shares did this, this sort of series following these four friends and the magical pair of pants that fit them all even though they're not all the same body type. <laughs> so kind of a, you know, goof, a goofy idea, but it was one that I loved and I love the idea of like close friendships and sort of the way that the story is told between a mix of like epistolary format where the girls are writing to each other and then also from each girl's perspectives. I think that's really well done and I enjoyed sort of the the ending to the series even though it is a little controversial. So I would still recommend this. It's got some things that are a little dated at this point I would say for sure including some body image stuff that I'm not a huge fan of in the story but overall um, I think it was a really well done series. Then for the fourth question, this one is Seth Hazlitt. So what character would be your best friend? Um, and Seth Hazlitt is Jessica's best friend in Murder, She Wrote. So for this prompt, I picked uh, Olga in Olga Dies Dreaming by Sochil Gonzalez. I read this book earlier this year and I think it's still a contender for my favorite fiction book of the year. Um, it's still really sitting with me. But in particular, the main character, Olga, is just excellent. Um, she is funny. She's smart. Um, she is basically a little bit flexible when it comes to rules and laws. And those are things that I appreciate in a best friend. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, but yeah, Olga, I would love to hang out with her and, uh, not drink a beer because I'm, I'm not a big drinker these days, but definitely share some delicious dessert and have a chat with each other. I think it would be really fun. Then the fifth prompt is Amos Tupper. So Amos Tupper is the good guy in Murder, She Wrote, um, a recurring character who is just an all around good person. And for this, they wanted you to pick out someone who is just a, a great a great character, a good guy, <laughs> basically. And for me, I picked out uh, a good girl. So I picked Donis in Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boulay. And um, I think that Donis is just one of these characters that has stuck with me because she is 
she tries to do the right thing in many, many ways. Like she definitely um, has questions and sometimes she does things that maybe are not um, super ethical or clear cut good decisions. But at the end of the day, her actions and the, the reason that she goes about doing the things that she does in this story are for very, very good reasons. And um, I love the relationships that she has with other people within her community, with her mom and her grandmother. There are just lots of examples of her showing up for people when they need her and um, do, doing the right thing. So I thought Donis was a good answer for this question. Then for number six, we have Michael Haggerty, who is a morally gray character. So for this one, you're supposed to pick out one of your favorite morally gray characters. And I'm going to go back to the Winter Night trilogy by Catherine Arden and say that Morosco, who is the Frost King in this series, is one of my all-time favorite morally gray characters. Um, the main character, Vasya and Morosco, have kind of a Death in the Maiden thing going on over the course of the trilogy. And I love the development of their relationship with each other and sort of the exploration of Morosco as um, a character who does represent death in many ways in literature, but also sort of the the ways that death is not necessarily evil, right? And the exploration of that. So I think this character is a really great one um, when we're thinking about morally gray characters. So second to last question, um, number seven, Mort Metzger. So this is supposed to be a book with someone who moves to a new town. And for this, I actually picked out Ray Bearer and the Ray Bearer duology by Jordan Afueco. And in this series, we have a group of children who are um, kind of live in all of these different sort of like kingdoms that are part of an empire. And they are, are tested and brought together to be in support of um, the emperor. And so when they're children, they all sort of come together and live in the same city and they leave their kingdoms that they are from. And so it's cool because there is like a found family element and um, lots of, you know, magical, really interesting stuff going on in this series in general. But I do like the aspect of sort of like leaving your your home, your space, you know, the place that makes you, that's kind of like raised you and where you come from and moving to a new place. And then also I think with that comes sort of this maintenance of a connection to your original home and the sort of the cultural artifacts and the background that connect you to that place. And so a really cool thing in this series is that each of the kids does maintain some of those connections and um, there's a lot of discussion about like how do you support the diversity of opinion and background and like cultural beliefs in such a large empire um, without squishing that creativity and sort of like tamping it down so that people stay in line. Um, that's sort of like a through line for this. So that's why it made me think of, of this book. And then the last question is, uh, inspired by Eve Simpson. So it's a question about what would be your favorite romance. And I have about a million different romances that I love. And many of them I've already talked about on this channel. In fact, I have an ongoing series where I talk about my favorite romances. So you can definitely check that out. Um, so I'm going to talk about one that is a favorite for this month so far. And that is The Kiss Curse by Erin Sterling. So this is the second book in um, this series that takes place in a small town in Georgia, um, sort of in the mountains. And I think it's in Georgia, I'm pretty sure. And uh, it follows witchy families basically who live in this town. There's like a university there that seems like it's a normal university, but they also have um, a witch type of like college program that they offer. And so in this community, there are a number of non-magical people who don't know that magic exists. And then there are a number of people who um, do practice magic and who go to or work at that university. So in the first book you followed, 
the main character who is um, a, a local witch and who works at the university and teaches there. <laughs> and she fell in love with um, one of a group of brothers who is from Wales, um, who's related to the family that started this town um, and sort of set it up as a magical community. And they fall in love with each other. And then in the second book, you follow the cousin of that witch. Um, and this cousin's name is Gwyneth and she's pretty fiery and passionate and she has really strong magic, but she's not like a hugely bookish person um, and she ends up falling for Wells Penhallow who's the brother of um, the hero in the first story and he's come there to start his own magical store and sort of like maintain his family's magic from this location um, from Groves Glen and he ends up setting up his shop across the street from her magical store that she runs with her mom. And so they get into a little bit of like a competition that turns spicy. Um, and it, it's really fun. I have enjoyed both books in this series so far. I know people say that they're like a little goofy, but really what it gives me in terms of like vibes is kind of a, a bit of like a Gilmore Girls, Stars Hollow, um, small town feeling and then just some really great characters and on top of that you have a cat who has been um, magically turned into a talking cat and um, there's like a whole thing with the cat in this story that got me nervous for a, an entire chapter but nothing bad happens to the cat so I know that ahead of time um, but yeah there's this great magical talking cat and I love it so Hopefully you've enjoyed this tag. Thank you to um, the all the people who did the tag in the original video and specifically Ms. Richards Reads for creating it in the first place. And I hope you have a good one.